crafty friends welcome to today's video in which i create a thinking of you card using both dry embossing and heat embossing do stick around to the end of the video because i've got a couple of extra ideas to share with you right the first thing that i'm going to do today before i do anything else is i'm going to stamp my sentiment on my card after yesterday's trials and tribulations i think that's the best way to go so I'm going to put a tag here on this part of the card and that means my sentiment is going to go about there. But to help me get it lined up straight I've got this grid so that's in the right place now. I shall pick up my sentiment. I'm going to heat emboss it in gold. So just give that little area there we're going over with cornflower give my stamp some embossing ink press it down gently and i'm going to do that again just so it's got good coverage i'm going to dip this in gold embossing powder but i don't want to dip my whole card base into it because some of the powder will end up going under the panel. So I'm just going to scoop a little bit with a folded piece of paper and sprinkle it over the sentiment. I think that should cover it. And then tap it off into there. The next step is to heat emboss and dry emboss this piece of linen textured cardstock so that's going to go in there like that but I'm also going to put some cornflour on my embossing folder to de-static it, de-grease it and I'm going to brush off the excess with a microfiber cloth because what I'm going to do next is put embossing ink on my embossing folder and then emboss that piece of card so I've got a reinker here and I'm going to put it on this brayer all the way round. Roll it so it's got a good even coverage on my brayer. And then on this side, this is the side with the raised pattern so it will deboss my paper when I put it on. I'm going to cover the whole area with embossing ink. I'm going to go from both directions to make sure everything gets a good coverage. And we'll put that somewhere where it's not going to stick on everything. And I'm going to wipe up this before I do anything else so we don't get embossing ink where we don't want it. I'm going to put this square face up on the side that I haven't added embossing ink to and I always do that so that if I accidentally jog my embossing folder while I'm shifting things about it doesn't matter if it moves about on there if I were to put it face down on there and then jog it and knock it that embossing ink will get stuck in the wrong places so I'll pop this here like that get it in the middle so it gets a good coverage and then just fold that over but as soon as that goes down I'm going to keep it clamped shut so there's no chance of it moving. Right I'm going to run this through my cuttle bug. So we've got our debossing there, put that aside for washing up and then I'm going to dip that into my gold embossing powder, give it a good tap to get off the excess and then heat that with my heat tool. So there we have a really gorgeous gold debossed piece of paper. So now I'm going to cut out a tag from this. This area is a bit cleaner. This has got a bit of extra embossing powder so the pattern's not quite so clear but um, I think what I'll do is go for this cleaner side 
and capture this big swirl here and then this I'll keep uh, that would make a really lovely background behind an aperture I think so I think we're going to go for this bit here now so by die cutting this it is slightly squished the debossing but uh, it's it's still there it's still textural so that's fine if you wanted to avoid that little bit of squishing you could um, cut the tag and then do the embossing folder and the heat embossing uh, and that's what I did with this one but as you can see you can't really tell the difference so you could do it either way and now I'm going to cut some extra shapes using these dies this is a floral wreath and I've got a sycamore leaf I think and I'm going to do them from linen textured cardstock so that all my whites match so there we go there's the wreath I've also cut one from vellum because I think I'll do some layering and there I've got two of these now I'm going to gold emboss on this again heat emboss with gold embossing powder but I'm not going to bother going over that with my anti-static pouch because I want this to be quite heavily embossed and I've got here an emboss it dabber from Ranger which contains clear embossing powder and I'm going to dab it over but I'm not looking for full coverage I kind of want some bits to be not embossed so that it gets a bit of a mottled look Okay, so I'm going to start assembling. I'm going to add my tag with some tape runner. It's going to go about there, but I'm going to use this to make sure it's straight before I press it down. Yep, that looks good. Next, I'm going to add my vellum and my white wreath. But to add this, I'm going to glue on the back. So I just spread this tacky glue out to a nice thin layer and press that down. And pop that on top of the vellum and then do that again so the vellum gets some glue and I'm going to pop that just so it's hanging off the edge of my tag and now I've got my gold leaf I was thinking I might where's that gone I'm going to snip off the stem, is it a stem? Stalk, that's what you call it, isn't it? When it's a leaf, the stalk, I think. And offset that slightly again so there's a white shadow behind it, and that'll just help it uh, stand out a bit. I'm going to put glue on the back of there to stick this to that so it gets a good sticking down. And then I'm going to put foam behind that. And that is going to sit on there, centrally-ish in the wreath. So this is all very monochromatic, gold and white. I do want to bring in a little bit of extra colour. And I'm going to use sponge sugar, which is such a light pink. So the addition of colour will be pretty subtle, I think. So there's our pale pink butterfly, which is going to sit on top of that leaf. Before we do anything else with him though, I'm going to gild him slightly. So some gilding wax. And we're going to go in just on the tips of his wings, very subtly. 
I find it's a good idea to kind of bring your colour in from the edges rather than going straight in. That way you can have more control, I think. And then maybe a little bit down his body. Not quite sure what I'm going to do for his body yet. I might give him some enamel dots. I think I will mount him on some vellum. There we go, that helps him stand out a bit. The vellum has the effect of taking the, the metallic shine out of the gold, but there's plenty of gold on there. So we don't need to worry about that. Time for some mini glue dots to stick him down. Just along his body so that his wings can lift up. I can get this one rolled into a little blob. It will fit behind there nicely. Now I'm thinking I've got some pinky peachy. I'm just wondering about one of these big enamel dots because he's got quite a fat body there, but I'm not sure now. That then a couple of smaller ones maybe. Oh, I think that looks all right. It's a little bit different to, uh, oops, usual. I think I might just add a couple of enamel dots as well, just to bring a bit of that pink out from the butterfly. Yeah, I think that will do. Actually, I might move this one over here near the sentiment so that it's all bound together by the pink. So that one's done. I think I did everything in the right order today, so uh, nothing went wrong. But before I go, I wanted to share a couple of ideas with you. So in case you haven't got any tag dies and you want to add a tag to your uh, card, you can use your trimmer and it's fairly simple. So I'm going to cut a rectangle that's two and a half inches wide by four inches high. Obviously, the benefit of doing it this way is that you can cut your tag to be any size you want. Then... At a pleasing angle, just cut a corner off. So that's my corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a little bit of tape runner here to make it sticky. And I'm going to take my corner, flip it over and stick it there. And then that in my trimmer, line it up. So what I do is I just cut off that corner along the line of the bottom of the triangle. And that way you get a symmetrical corner. Because if you try and do that and then try and cut, cut, cut to try and match that to that, it can be really tricky and frustrating. But if you take your corner, flip it over, stick it down and then cut along the edge of it, you'll get a symmetrical tag. And then all you've got to do is measure halfway, draw a line, and then take your punch, your single hole punch, and line it up so that that line is going across the diameter of the circle. And there you have a tag, where everything is where you want it. And the other thing I wanted to show you was what happens when instead of putting your embossing ink on the raised portion the, that will deboss your paper, you can put embossing ink on the other side on the, well it's essentially the raised portion of this side, but this is the embossing side of the folder where the pattern will be raised up. So you can 
put your embossing ink on this side so it will go on the background rather than the image and then when you heat emboss it instead of getting the debossed side heat embossed you end up with this side the background embossed so you get a lot more gold with this particular embossing powder um, embossing folder rather uh, so that's the same embossing folder but I inked up different sides so have a play with your embossing folders try inking up both sides of the embossing folder and seeing what difference it makes when you heat emboss it right that's it I think that will do for today I hope you've enjoyed the video if it has please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all those things. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.